Local swall trackers on this windy Wednesday, the 13th. We're doing a little hind casting. And, uh, here's what we got. That big swell that we saw reached near 15 feet. Well, we had two culprits. Actually, we had two swells this past week. This guy right here, this is going back last Friday. And that whipped up waves to almost 15 feet. Starting in the animation, the thing was uh, fading off in the Gulf, but followed up by a, a stronger storm with a faster east track. But the swells uh, or the seas supported one another. And yesterday, Tuesday, uh, Sunset Beach, according to Reliable OBS, did see some 15-foot sets way out the back, thanks to that guy. And uh, that will be f uh, fading off in there. And, of course, we got another fatty uh, forming up here. The jet is lower, well, the seasonal average right now. And we are seeing these uh, the troughs in the jet stream and the lows forming within it. And that's what the jet stream does. It helps the, the formation of storms and steers them once they're shaped. And boy, there's three back-to-back -back big ones right here for you. So let me get to the current models. So here we go. Now, these are the surface winds. And you can see them spinning counterclockwise here in the north pack. You can see some colors down here with the upstream trade wind swell. The waves are solid four feet along the windward side with advisories posted now. Again, thanks to the high pressure off here to the east and a long fetch of some sub gales to gales and uh, allowing the longer periods to you know boost up the waves a little bit. I mean, it really does make a difference even from eight to nine seconds. And that is what we are seeing right here. But back to the attention to the real swell, this guy over here at the 180 date line is going to work some magic. So let's take a look at that guy. And although it stays fairly far away, we are going to see some long period forerunners of 20 seconds due to the high winds. And that's going to be popping 3 feet 20 seconds Friday morning and then getting up to 6 to 8 feet, 16 to 18 seconds in the afternoon. So solid 10 foot sets, maybe some pluses. Uh, you know how long periods can work their magic on the outer reef. So we'll see what happens. But this swell is going to get at least 10 to 12 plus and be uh, whomping into Saturday at dawn and then be dropping off to about 7 feet on Sunday thanks to this guy right here. So let's take a look at the swells produced by those surface winds. Here's the guy right there uh, at the date line starting in the animation. You can see that track off into the gulf. We get another storm right here. And this is for this current weekend. We'll see some eight, maybe nine foot of swell at 15 to 16 seconds on Wednesday the 20th. So we got another solid 10 foot swell expected mid next week. Again, a round robin of some winter caliber events here. It's going to be a long lasting event since it had a nice slow track. Now, right here, Wednesday, we have another smaller gale low. And that one's going to boost us up uh, Friday the 22nd into Saturday. And that one should maybe get about six feet uh, sometime later Friday, but for sure by Saturday uh, morning, we'll see some solid six-footers from this guy. And then we go rather quiet until the end of the month. Now, the South Pack is relatively boring, although this is going back Friday the 8th. We do have a system under Tahiti here, but it tracks the wrong way. It kind of moves uh, down to the southeast, and so we're not expected to see much. We have Tasman Sea activity here, but again, it's all fairly zonal and really deep in the Tas, and we're not going to see a whole lot from that. But this broad fetch right here that you start to see shape up well i'm going to show you that storm again these are the surface winds and this is doing some hind casting going back wednesday the 13th but we do see a nice size first spring south southwest swell from this guy down here that's the last loop here on the seven day hind castings from uh, storm surf but now bringing us current we'll start in the animations once again and watch the loops there there we go and it has a decent tilt towards the equator a meridional flow, we like that. We don't like the jet stream going zonal and tr steering those storms across our great circle rays relative to Hawaii. We need the winds to point our way so that the fetch lasts longer and the seas, the winds can push those seas up to their full potential. Well, here's the guy right here, and we are going to have solid two to three, probably see a couple four-footers at select reefs from this culprit right here. We'll have some 20-second forerunners Wednesday the 20th, It'll be filling in slowly with long lulls. And then Thursday the 21st, we'll see some 18 seconds. And again, another slow rise. The deep water spots like Browns and other spots we don't talk about will probably see some overhead waves on Thursday. And then the swell really fills in completely Friday the 22nd. And here's the guy right here. And uh, that uh, has a nice, it's going to be a nice long-lasting event. Now we have this other swell that comes in through the Tasman Sea and out to the east coast of New Zealand. It does go zonal, doesn't have a nice 
east northeast track like the last one we still will see some 20 second forerunners from this guy and that will be a sunday the 24th and hopefully that by tuesday it will be filled in at about solid three feet from this guy it's a very large storm and although the track isn't great the winds are and it is broad enough the wider the fetch the easier easier it is for those seas to remain steady up that 5,000 mile journey to Hawaii and taking a look at the jet stream we see a lot of the blues here the high pressures indicative of spring the jet actually is fairly low for this time of year and I'll start in the animations you can see a lot of blues down here but then that one uh, deeper trough in the jet is going to allow that swell that south southwest swell coming in at the towards the end of next week We'll roll the animations. You see how that thing bends up and steers that one storm I was showing you, and then it goes zonal after that. And even though we do that large system, it's, again, tracking zonal or west to east. And take a look up here on the north pack. The jet's looking good through the seven-day model runs with some dips down towards Hawaii and, again, steering a couple winter caliber events our way. And, uh, hey, things, even though they quiet down towards the end of the month, uh, we still should be looking okay, possibly, into May. If the jet keeps behaving like this, there's still quite a bit of energy up there, even though we are all beyond El Nino now, and it's not likely to come back. And the reflective loop showing the rain. Yeah, there's quite a bit along the windward Malka, especially off to the southeast of the Big Island. There's definitely some embedded showers, and that pattern is going to increase over the weekend as the trades freshen up again. But we are into a break, cleaner conditions for the North Shore, although it's going to be very small on a Thursday starting to come back up with long periods. Friday is going to be pretty whomping by the afternoon, so don't be fooled by what you see in the morning. Call 596-SURF and, of course, log in right here, and we'll keep you dialed in. Thanks for being here. See you next week. Aloha.